In this video, we are asking the question, what is the best polisher for you to use as a professional auto detailer today? And listen, if you're watching this video and you're interested in getting started in paint correction and particularly with the goal of applying ceramic coatings to cash flow, the ceramic coating service part of your detailing business, go below in the YouTube description box and grab my free five part video series called the Ceramic Coating Quick Start. We teach you how to go from a complete beginner, whether you've never touched a polisher or a ceramic coating before, and by the end, you can use both of these things, not only well without risk, but also in a way where you will learn to cash flow it and bring in customers to your business so that you you don't just buy an expensive hobby by purchasing a bunch of polishers or ceramic coatings like most detailers do. <laughs> so in front of me guys, I've got my dual action polisher from Rupes. This is the Mark II. This is basically the polisher I've been using for the last, let's say like four years, almost every day of my life. And then I've got my forced rotation polisher from Rupes. I can't remember the exact model name and number of this, but this is the five inch backing plate. It's their forced rotation. And these are the two polishers I want to compare right now. Now we could talk endlessly about the differences between a dual action polisher and a forced rotation polisher, but before we get into any of that boring stuff, on either side of this tape, I've got a 3000 grit scratch pattern here and a 3000 grit scratch pattern here. This is a bit of an arbitrary experiment, okay, because number one, there's no way that I can make these scratch patterns exactly the same. Number two, there's a little bit difference in terms of the clear coat measurement on each side of these test hoods. And number three, I've got a finishing pad on my DA, I've got a finishing pad on my forced rotation, but they're not from the same company because unfortunately I don't have a five inch of the Black Lake Country foam finishing pad. But nonetheless, we've made this as equal as possible, meaning a finishing pad, we're gonna be using the same polish and we're gonna be doing the same experiment on the same 3000 grit scratch pattern. All I wanna do is set my phone timer right here. I wanna polish this side with the DA, I wanna polish this side with the forced rotation, and I wanna see in what kind of time frame can I get rid of these 3000 grit marks and these 3000 grit marks using each of these polishers. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So I've got my stopwatch here. I'm gonna set it when I start, stop it when I finish on both sides. This is gonna be the DA, this is gonna be the forced rotation. I'm using a non-diminishing abrasive, very simple polish. Let's see how long it takes on either side to get rid of the 3000 grit marks. Okay, before I take you guys in here, I just wanna show you, I stopped the timer at the same time, about 22 seconds, and the DA clearly removed every single one of the sanding marks. The forced rotation has not removed all of it yet. There's still a little bit right here. Again, we're gonna dive into all this in just a second. Let me go again for about 10 to 15 seconds, see if I can take this off. Now something to notice really quickly is over here the sanding marks are gone. It's clear that they're gone. This was inside with the DA. Over here the sanding marks are now gone, but I did actually burn through the paint a little bit on this test hood, and it is worth noting that in terms of the mill measurement here and here of the clear coat, we were separated by about, let's say, 0.1 mils, but it was basically the same. You can see that I burned through the clear coat. I've got some black coloring on my pad there, and we've got a little bit of a cloudy appearance. I went for about 10 to 15 more more seconds than I did over here to remove the remaining bit of these sanding marks. So why am I talking about this and why did we run kind of an arbitrary experiment like this? Let me get to the point of the video. Without explaining anything else, the dual action polisher from Rupes right here, their Mark II or Mark III that they now have out. This is my favorite polisher on the market. It has been for probably the last four years. It still is my favorite and it is 100% my go-to. And I've got my rotary, my mini up here, my force rotation here, and this is my fourth polisher polisher in this particular garage. So out of the four polishers I use in this garage, why is this one top of my list? Well, I don't want to get too in the weeds of all of the technical, let's say, logic you could use when you examine people's opinions about polishers and what they do and don't do, but the dual action polisher just removed my 3000 grit sanding marks in 22 seconds on this test hood. I didn't burn through even one mil of the clear coat, okay? I'm not through the color coat. It's still in perfect 
perfect condition and I got the exact results I wanted. The forced rotation polisher on the other hand, again a bit of an arbitrary experiment because you could say on this side we have a little bit less clear coat and maybe we have a little bit more aggressive sanding marks because I spent five more seconds scratching this side than this side so there were more sanding marks to remove. That being said, the forced rotation did not remove it in the time that I wanted it to be removed and when I spent more time on it I went right through this part of the clear coat given both sides of the clear in this experiment were very very thin. That was actually part of the point. Now listen, the point of this video is not to say that the forced rotation burns through quicker than the DA every single time because different paint has different hardness. We know that certain clear coats are going to be burned through a little bit easier than others and when we're comparing the forced rotation to the DA there's basically a thousand ways to compare them where in some instances I could burn through paint faster with a DA than I could a forced rotation if I'm being intentional about it. But here's my point. In the detailing world we often hear about the aggressive and quick measures or work that a rotary or a forced rotation can do on car paint relative to a dual action in terms of correcting it in a speed or a time frame that's way shorter. And my argument would be this. When you use something like a forced rotation, even more so when you're using something like a rotary, what often happens is you actually produce even more work for yourself post the initial use of the rotary or the forced rotation where follow-up measures have to be taken in order for the paint to be perfected. The dual action polisher can take 3000 grit sanding marks like you saw in this video, the same non-diminishing abrasive polish that I use in basically every scenario. I do not get any hologramming. I do not get any hazing. I get a perfect finish and I can choose whether or not I want to follow up with a finishing dedicated polish. In this case, I don't want to because these results are perfectly fine. I've got a mirror finish, all the imperfections removed, and I'm completely done. Unfortunately, when dual action polishers first came out in the detailing world, they often underperformed what already existed, things like rotary polishers. And so there's been this kind of lagging effect of detailers wanting to use the rotary all the time because the rotary gets things done faster. The rotary gets things done faster. Yes, I understand there are older detailers than me who, again, are part of a generation I was not a part of and they probably love the rotary and that is totally fine. But the argument I'm making here is that the dual action polisher I hold in my hand, the Mark II LHR21 from Rupes, is probably the best polisher on the market because not only are you going to be able to take care of serious imperfections without having to do more work afterwards, but you're going to be able to do it in a time frame that totally makes sense and is not going to be significantly beat by something like a rotary or a forced rotation. Dual action polishers have come a seriously long way in the detailing world and any really serious detailer that I know, particularly those who are running really large shops and their goal is to franchise and to continue moving, they only train their detailers on dual action polishers because not only can I accomplish the results I'm talking about with a dual action like I did in this video, but in addition to that, a dual action polisher, and this is something that's not talked about a lot, is in many ways maybe even less hard on the paint you're correcting. We're not going to go down this rabbit hole, but correcting paint is actually not always good for the paint. It's kind of an aggressive thing no matter what type of polisher you're using. And so when you can use a machine that disperses heat and even creates, let's say, maybe a little bit less vibration and rattling or chatter on the paint, you're going to long term get a life out of the paint that may not be true when you're correcting it with other measures that are focusing in heat, focusing in chatter, and doing things that are more aggressive in a dedicated area. Listen guys, there's a thousand different things we could say about a dual action polisher versus every other polisher. This is just one of them and again kind of an arbitrary experiment to open up the conversation. If you are interested in getting your hands on a polisher, this is absolutely the one I suggest. No, I'm not sponsored by Rupes. I don't work with Rupes. It's just the top of the line product on the market and I will link up this product as well as the forced rotation in the YouTube description box below if you want to check those out. And listen, if you're watching this video and you're interested in getting started in paint correction and particularly with the goal of applying ceramic coatings to cash flow, the ceramic coating service part of your detailing business, go below in the YouTube description box and grab my free five part video series called the Ceramic Coating Quick Start. We teach you how to go from a complete beginner, whether you've never touched a polisher or a ceramic coating before, and by the end you can use both of these things, not only well without risk, but also in a way where you will learn to cash flow it and bring in customers to your business so that you don't just buy an expensive hobby by purchasing a bunch of polishers or ceramic coatings like most detailers do. Again, that free five part video series is below in the YouTube description box. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like detailing content and particularly detailing business content, make sure to hit the subscribe button, like this video, 
if this simple comparison is helpful so that I know for future videos. And as always, from Luke here at Wilson Auto Detailing, keep working hard, and I'll see you guys in the next video.